Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and in this series of Python, I am going to discuss about one of the applications that I um, promised you to discuss and that is uh, related to the client and server uh, chat application, so client server based chat, chat application. So in this chat application, uh, I have created two things. One program is uh, for the server and the other program is for the client. So the client can be many and uh, they are, they want to, if they want to communicate to each other, they will first connect to the server and then they will send the message to the other client through the server, right? So how we have done that, how we can do that, let's see. So first of all, it's a client, uh, it's a, it's a console based application. So uh, you might not see that kind of uh, look and feel of sending the messages immediately to and fro, but uh, this code is proper and uh, everything has been received by the server and the server can send it to the different clients. It can broadcast to the other clients, right? So let's see what we can do. So here you can see that I have imported three things, socket, threading and pickle and this is the connected list for of, of all those clients which has connected to the server. So these three things, listening, opening the socket and bind, I have already discussed in the previous video. So you can go there and see. And uh, before discussing this function, let's see what I'm doing here in the while loop. So in the while loop, what I'm doing after binding to the port and after starting listening, I'm just waiting for the new connections uh, as a server. So accept function call will uh, wait for the new connections. And uh, once a new connection will come, it will return two things, client socket and IP, which I have already discussed. And once client is connected, I'm, sh I'm sending connected message to the client. And then I'm asking for the, I'm expecting, the server is expecting uh, the client username uh, from the client. So once uh, client username will be provided by the client, I'm creating a name client player, a pair, not player, it's pair, name and cli name client and pair. So client name and the pair, both I'm just creating uh, as a list. And uh, after creating it as a list, I'm just appending it to the connected list dot list. Right here is the list. And in this list, I'm just appending it to uh, the final list. And uh, so basically, it's a list of lists. It, it could have been something better, like uh, it could be, uh, you know, it, it could have been uh, like uh, um, a tuple. But uh, I have not used the tuple. I have simply used the list. And anyways, that will work. And uh, before, after, as soon as I add the name client pair, I am also sending the message to the client, connected client, that now you have been enabled for the chat. So I'm just sending the message that now you are enabled for the chat. Okay. And then I have started a new thread for this new client, whatever new client will come. So in this new client, what I'm doing, I'm just running in a loop. This server is running in a loop. And this server is waiting for the new messages that uh, one client will be sending to the other client and that message will contain two parts and uh, those two parts are like first part is the message and the second part is the ip or you can say the um, not ip basically the client socket related to the other socket right because here when i'm creating the name client pair i am uh, storing the name as well and as well as the socket using which i can communicate so that's why um, when uh, here I will come, I'm just, uh, this This is just coming from there. So uh, this will contain the name, message pickle one dot contain the name. I'm pickling here, I'm using the pickle. So you can see in my previous videos that how you can use pickle for uh, serializing the things. So pickle is also used for the file handling and here I've also used it for the uh, serialization of the object over the network, right? So message pickle uh, in the zeroth index at the zeroth index what will come at the zeroth index the actual message will come that uh, one client want to send to the other client and at the index one the name of the other client will come to whom uh, the one client the first client want to send the message and then in the connected list we are just checking if the name of the uh, client available or not if the name of the client is available, then what we are doing, we are just uh, using the L1.L. In the connected list, you can see that this was the second one, means the first index is the client socket. So using that socket, I'm using the send function and sending it to the other client, right? So whatever message has been sent, whatever message one client want to send, he will provide me the name of the client in at the index one, and he will provide the actual message at the index zero. And in my connected list, I have already already the list of all the connected clients. So using those uh, using that list, what I'm doing, I'm simply checking whether my uh, 
whether the message which we want to send that particular client available or not if that particular client is available then i am just using the client socket associated with that to send the message right so this way my uh, message from one client to the other client is getting delivered okay so let's see the client application now so this one is the client application here also i am using the threading pickle and socket these things i have already discussed with you so here what i am doing i am just just connecting after connecting i will just receive a message that you have been connected from the server and then after that it is asking for you to please provide your display name i mean it is asking the client to provide his display name so he will provide the display name and that display name will be sent to the server and what server will do one server will get the name client uh, client user name and so and the client socket he has already got so once he will get both the things he will just create a name and client pair i mean the socket pair socket and uh, client name pair right so that it can further use it for the communication and uh, here what what it is doing after providing the name it is waiting for the new message for the from the server that whether uh, this this client is enabled for the chat or not so here what is happening once it is able to uh, connect once, once it is able to append the name client pair to the list it is sending the message to the client that you are enabled for the chat before appending it is sending so it can be before or after we can put it after for the logic sense to make it logical so once it is appended then only it is sending the message to the client that yes now you are enabled for the chat and after that it is opened the new client chat client and this i have already discussed with you so here let's see what is happening here what is happening like i have just uh, started a new loop here and inside the loop i have created a thread for receiving the messages why i have created a thread because if i will put it inside a while loop then it will keep waiting for the message to come and then only it will go to the next uh, instruction right so to avoid that and to get a uh, some somewhat uh, real feeling like uh, as soon as uh, someone has sent the message the other end is able to get the message for that feeling i have just uh, uh, made it in a thread okay so this new chat message messages will be a new thread that will be started as soon as uh, um, we are enabled for the chat at the client end and then in this loop you will be asked for providing the message like what message you want to send and then what you what message you want to to whom you want to send the message and after that it is creating a list and after that we are pickling the list so that it can be serialized and after this serialization is done we are just sending it over the network right so here we are sending the message and here we are receiving the message in a separate thread so both the things are working in parallel right so let's see how it will work so here let's use the port number 9013 because 9012 has already been occupied so i'm using this 9034 now 9013 so let's start this server so i'm first just starting the server so this server has been started it is listening at the port and now let us do one more thing i we just need to open these two and this one as well so that we have all the things ready with us so here what i am doing i am just going to open the program client program so python client.py so here you can see that new client has been connected right it is asking for the name so i am providing a name amit so the first client name is amit and uh, here is the now you can see that enable for chat this message has been received from the server similarly here as well i will do for the other client so what is the name name is suppose sumit and uh, now sumit is also enabled for the chat so once sumit is also enabled for the chat and amit is also enabled for the chat then they can send message to each other so suppose amit want to send the message to sumit that hi sumit and he he has been asked like to whom you want to send to so you want to send it to sumit right so as soon as you will click it press it you will be able to see that sumit has got the message hi sumit right the problem with this uh, console based application is that you cannot get a real time feel because these are the console based applications and uh, you will get the messages haphazardly and uh, there will be no 
actual place and uh, like uh, it will be you know very messy when you will try to communicate both these things with each other so better would be that you create um, uh, your application using the using uh, some gui tool and then uh, we can have a better feel of uh, having a chat application a chat server so here like uh, sumit can also send a message like hi amit and uh, he want to send it to Amit. So here you can see that Amit has also got the message, right? So that is the problem, but it is uh, asking for the ne next message. So you can send it like, how are you? And again, if you want to send it to Amit. But he is Amit itself. So Let's try your message is Amit sent to Sumit because he's already Amit, so he cannot send it to himself. So here you can see that you are not able to receive the message because again the problem of the threading is there. I mean it's a console based application, so you cannot have a real feel. And here you want to send it to Amit. Right. So you can see that at the server end everything has been received whatever you will send that will be received at a server end but because of being a console application it is not accepting all the things so here like how are you do something like this if you send that to sumit everything will be received at the server end how are you did to sumit right like, so everything is there but here it is not received because it is a client uh, it's a console based application and threads uh, are not able to work that way here right so uh, in some uh, coming videos i will try to uh, create some program which can give you some a uh, real look and feel right so it may be that uh, two clients can send the messages to each other and those messages we can put in some file okay or we can create some you know uh, some kind of application uh, gui based application to have a real look and feel like how these messages are uh, communicated to each other right so this is sure that everything is coming to the server and from server uh, we are also able to send it to the other one other end but the thing is that uh, we are not able to see at the other end because of this being a console application and the threads uh, it doesn't work that way in this application because somewhere it might be locked right so everything is fine the only thing is that uh, this is the console based application and that is why you cannot get a real feel otherwise everything has been received here and everything has been sent through the server otherwise it could have been thrown an exception right so that was uh, the basic idea like how you can use the tcp ip protocol to send the messages from one end to the other end from one client to the other client and in the next video i will try uh, to have some uh, video chat application using the you know uh, your uh, udp uh, application udp protocol user datagram protocol because uh, user datagram protocol is useful for such kind of applications where you can afford to lose some packets packets okay so that's all for today guys and uh, in the next video i will try to uh, bring up some um, gui based application since i have not explained any gui based application in the python so i will not cover this socket thing for the just this chat application for the uh, for the GUI based application. So in the end, when I will cover the client based application, like a GUI based application, then in that case, I will try to explain it again, and we will use some graphical user interface to have the messaging to and fro, right, between the two clients. Okay, so we will meet in the next video, and uh, if I will be able to create a video chat application using the UDP quickly then I will explain it tomorrow. Otherwise, you need to wait for two to three days if that gets some problem for me to create otherwise because that will be a GUI based application anyways, right? But that GUI based application will not need you to understand the GUI because I will use the, I will use the libraries which are uh, freely available, right? And uh, those libraries itself handle the GUI based uh, things there. So. You don't need to understand the GUI based things there. Okay, so OpenCV is the library that I will use for that. 
but it is not uh, necessary that in the next video I will cover that it may be that I may take two or three more days to come up with that okay so if I am not able to cover that thing in the next video then we will move ahead with the database uh, connection and database programming with the Python so till then have a nice day and bye bye